so we are going to trust God to launch your life with God this morning. Okay, so I'm sure most of you would have heard of Elon Musk. Now, this man is a world changer. But, he, you know, the interesting thing is he's born in Pretoria. He's a Pretoria boy. He went to uh, the University of Pretoria for his first year. And then he left for Canada and then the U.S. And so this is the good news is that um, world changers do come from the soil of this land. So I want to inspire you. So Elon Musk, he, he founded SpaceX and uh, also he's leading multiple other companies like Tesla and they are changing the world and they're doing incredibly inspiring things. So in 2018, they did a test launch of the SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket and then they launched Elon's personal Tesla Roadster into space. Why? Because it's cool. <laughs> and so they, they're on a mission to put people on Mars. And uh, so I want to bless you guys with an epic video clip, four-minute video clip to give you a bit of a feel of what these incredible space rocket launches look like. Okay, so let's, let's play. Most space uh, organizations, government or, or commercial, have set their sights too low. They've, they've really gotten built relatively small rockets. Um, and Falcon Heavy is the first time that there's, there's something that's arguably even in the super heavy class or somewhere between heavy and super heavy. You know, five million pounds of thrust is really crazy amount of power. Uh, more than twice as much payload as any other rocket in the world. It can launch things direct to Pluto, no stop needed. Hotels in the area are completely sold out. Yeah. Parking lots are packed. It's like the first time something exciting has happened in rocket launch in a very long time. Falcon Heavy is configured for flight. T minus 15, stand by for terminal count. SpaceX Falcon Heavy, go for launch. And nine. All systems eight, eight, three. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Gotcha, I see it. Yeah, I got him. They're there. Oh my God. 
You've got to be kidding me! What? that inspiring or what? Yeah. They, like Elon Musk is inspiring a generation to dream, to dream, to go to Mars and do incredible things. So there's a whole lot of people jumping onto this bandwagon or rather rocket, you know, when they say, yeah, let's do it. So I, I wanted to show that to you because I wanted to give you a picture of launching your life with God. As those rocket boosters, as the, as the, the fire lifts that, that rocket into space. I believe God wants to do the same kind of thing in our lives. You say, it's, it's cool and it's, it's epic to say, man, let's, let's go to Mars. But what if there's something better than that? What if there's something better than going to Mars, but actually bringing another world to earth because ultimately Elon and these guys are saying we've got issues in our world you know we need to save humanity their solution is go to Mars so I have bad news <laughs> when we go to Mars all our problems go with us because <laughs> we have issues you know our problems are within us Evil is in our veins in a sense you know in our nature in our human nature we tend to do wrong and to hurt one another and one you know if there's a good path we'll normally choose the bad path that's just it's in our dna and i'm sure the devil's going to be on the first flight out to mars as well so it's just it might not solve our things but it will it would be epic to see people on on mars so a few weeks ago i shared about this world i uh, having a toxic atmosphere spiritually speaking that all of us are born into a toxic environment spiritually. And as we just breathe it, as we just are ourselves, we tend to breathe in that toxic atmosphere and we tend to go in the wrong directions. So we just like, as we breathe in the, the atmosphere around us, we tend to be jealous, we tend to hate, we tend to lie, we tend to lust, we tend to, if it's bad, it's wrong, we'll probably go down that path. Because eh? that's, that's our environment. That is the toxic environment of this world. And there are so many of us, you know, made by God. You are designed by God. You're like that rocket sitting there on that launching pad. And God is wanting to launch you into His will for your life, into destiny, into, into freedom. But so many of us are stuck right there on that launching pad, unable to break free. You know, gravity is what holds that rocket down. And you need a whole lot of firepower to break free from the earth's gravity and to get into space. And I believe in the same way, there is what I call, or the Bible calls, the spirit of this world. And that's what's holding us down. That's what keeping us stuck to that launching pad instead of launching into orbit with God. So we need some serious firepower to break free into all that God has for us. And that firepower is called the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's what God did on Pentecost around 2,000 years ago. As the Holy Spirit was poured out on the heads and the hearts of people, they literally saw fire on the hearts and the heads. Of, and it was like, and, and the, the early church was launched into God, into orbit with God, into freedom, to break free from the spirit of this world. 
And in the same way, you and I need that. You and I need also the firepower of the Holy Spirit to break out, to break free from the spirit of this world. And so we're talking about, in this series, we're talking about changing your world. How do you change your world? How do you change your world? Well, you need to break free from the spirit of this world through the power of the Holy Spirit. So I want to unpack that today. And, 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 and today is more than just a message. Actually, the mission is, at the end of the message, is to pray for people and to see them launched into God. So I want to pray for those. At the end of the service, I'm warning you, if you are far from Jesus today and you need to commit your life to Christ, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond to Jesus. For those at home as well. Because God is there as well. And secondly, for those who need a fresh infilling of the Spirit, who need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, maybe you've lost the fire, we're going to pray for you for some fresh fire. And then thirdly, if you feel there's darkness on your soul, you're bound by stuff that's holding you back, then we're going to pray for you as well. We had an epic time in the first service. So second service is normally next level. Okay, so are you ready to launch your life with God? Eh? Come on. I'm trusting that the Lord's going to touch you this morning. Okay, so I've been, you know, as, as Elon and these guys are talking about, you know, we need to save mankind. But what will save us? What, what will truly save us? Because everybody has a solution. Well, the answer is really Jesus. But the real Jesus, not the fake one. So I've been spending time with some uh, new believers over the last few weeks, and it's been epic. I've been listening to some of them share their stories. Like the one girl shared with me that when she was at school, still young, twin, early 20s or what, and she said when she was at school, there was one boy in the class that went to church, and they all mocked that guy. Oh, you the churchy guy. You know, she, that, that was where she was at. And the others, they were like, Jesus, rubbish. Church, rubbish. It's a load of nonsense. And I agree. <laughs> I agree when it's not the real deal. When it's dead religion, it's like a rocket standing there and it promises to fly, but it never flies because there's no power. There's no fire. And so then you're also going to say, about well, this bunch of nonsense. And now she's saying, this girl saying that it's just amazing when she has now met with Jesus over this last year and she's just telling everybody, everybody about Jesus. She's like, I never knew. You know, and, 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 and even this last few weeks, they lie, just their encounters with God. Man, I love it. I love to see them share and to say, hey, well, I have experienced religion and it was blah, dead. But now my life is being radically transformed. So where are you at this morning? <laughs> where are you at? Where are you at in your walk with God? I'm going to show you in a moment the... Uh, uh, a graph that will explain something. But before I get there, so Acts chapter 8, verse 4. We're going to be in cha Acts chapter 8. I'm going to unpack a little bit of what the early church looked like and how the power of the Holy Spirit was operating in their midst and how they received more of that. But so what if the answer is not going to Mars, but to bring another world here to earth? Shared it two weeks ago. What if, we, what if we could change the atmosphere within us and around us? And this is what the guys did, the early church. Acts chapter 8, verse 4. Look at this. But the believers who were scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. If it's not good news, it's probably not Jesus. The real deal is good news. It's what you long for. It's what you desire in life to know him. That's when you come alive. And then says, Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria and told the people there about the Messiah. Crowds listened intently to Philip because they were eager to hear his message and see the miraculous signs that he did. You see, the original deal wasn't only a message. It was ministry as well. It wasn't just, hey, this is who Jesus is in terms of speaking it or proclaiming it. No, let me show you. This is what Jesus looks like. This is what he's still doing today through the power of the Spirit. Verse 7, 
Many evil spirits were cast out, so they had darkness on their souls, screaming as they left their victims. And many who had been paralyzed or lame were healed. Even physically, as this other world came down, they were, the darkness was replaced on, in their hearts, and even their physical bodies were restored. So I think it's way cooler to bring another world here. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. And then verse eight, so there was great joy in that city. Come on, say great joy. Great joy. The atmosphere over the city was changed because another world came down. When that world comes, when the kingdom of heaven comes down, when you and I experience the kingdom of God, you come alive. You're like, no way. <laughs> can it be this amazing? Yes, it can and more. And so I feel there's a whole bunch of us that needs a bit of a, a joy upgrade. We need in our homes and in our workplaces, in our lives, we need the atmosphere to be shifted. And I tell you, God is ready to flood in. He's ready to flood in. But the question is how? How do we launch our lives with God? What do we need to do to launch our lives with God? So in these passages, I'm going to show you some keys of how you can. So how do we change our world? How do you change your world when you feel stuck yourself? You need to change first. Okay, so that's what we're going to trust today. We're going to pray for you guys, and we're going to trust God to touch you. There's so many people that feel stuck on that landing platform, and they are not moving. So how can we get you moving? Okay, that's what I want to answer. Some of us feel like we have no purpose in life. Some of us feel like everything's pointless. I mean, is there really a God? You know, some of us are there. Some of us are bound by bad habits, self-destructive habits. We mess up our own lives and we mess up the lives around us because we're stuck with a bunch of bad habits. Some of us have darkness on our souls and we need Jesus to set us free. Some of us have lost our passion. You were on, on, on fire for the Messiah some time ago and you've lost it. So how do we, how do we get the fire burning again. The spirit of this world leaves us empty. I've been spending time with people that have been stuffing up their lives, you know, with a lot of things, and I'm getting feedback, it's empty. <laughs> the parties, the alcohol, the sleeping around, the, all the stuff they're doing, it's like it's empty. Because the spirit of this world will leave you empty. You were not made for the spirit of this world. You were made for the spirit from God. You were made for God's spirit to transform you. And I want to call you guys into that. Because that is just epic. Okay, so you saw the, the, the rocket launch. You saw that powerful fire launching that rocket. You need fire power to break free from the spirit of this world. You need fire power. So I want to show you a, a, a graph. Put up my graph there. This is the engineer in me. How do you launch your life with God? Okay, so on the bottom x-axis, you have time. As time progresses, you should be moving up with God. You see those little steps? Uh, the the y-axis is maturity. So at the top, that's Jesus. That's becoming like Christ. You fully look like Jesus, and, and, and that's probably not going to be in this lifetime. It's a, it's a process. It will be completed the day you step into eternity, the day you breathe your last, and you see God without any obstacles. You're going to be like Him. But the, So these, these are all those steps, little steps. And as you continue, it reveals also your passion should increase. Your fire for God, your love for God. You know, the light also should increase as you continue. And then here in the corner at the bottom left there, you have J. It stands for Jesus. Whoop, whoop. So you, 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 your starting point is there. You need to encounter Christ. So some of us might be on the left there. We're not, you're not on the graph yet. <laughs> You, you might have had moments where God has intervened, and that's beautiful when I speak to people. They say even before they turn to Jesus, there were these moments where they can see the hand of God protecting them and, 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 and shepherding them to himself. So some of us are there on the left before. You haven't yet met with Jesus yet. And the best thing in the world is to meet Jesus. 
The best thing in the world is when you meet with him and then you need to start stepping up step by step. You move upwards in launching yourself with God. Now, some of us have moved up and then you have gone down again. You've lost your fire. I've been speaking to multiple people that have been confessing to me like, Andre, I've lost the plot completely. The last year has been a disaster, but I'm back. I want to sort out my life. I tell you, there is no life outside of Jesus. So 1 Corinthians 2 verse 12, it speaks about the spirit of the world. It says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, that toxic atmosphere, that thing that just causes your thoughts to go downhill, negativity, self-hatred, depression, lies, pointless existence. That is not the will of God for us. But that's the spirit of the world. It says, for, for what we have received is not the spirit of this world, of the world, but the spirit who is from God. That is what we receive as believers in Christ. We receive the spirit that is from God, from that other world, from that other realm, the, the spirit of God that comes upon us. And then it says, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. You see, when, when you receive the spirit of Christ, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, it's like your eyes open up. You realize how much God has given you. I'm always amazed when I speak to people. You can have two people sitting next to one another in church. And the one is like, Jesus is epic. And the other one's like, May, can you please finish now? I want to go home. I came, okay? I came. You asked me to come. I came. Can I now go home? And I'm like, come on. How can the one be so stoked? Their lives are being transformed by the power and the love of God. And then somebody else be so blind to the fullness of Jesus. So I want to say to you this morning, wake up. <laughs> wake up. There is more. Why are you still on the graph? Go back to the graph. Why are you still there at the bottom? Bottom step. And you have been a Christian for so many years, for instance. Why do you sum it up and then you go back down again? Come on. There is a place that it, it only becomes real fun when you start moving upwards. Being launched into God. When the fire of the Spirit launches you, then this thing rocks. You come alive. I tell you, you come alive like nothing else on this world. Come on, say it. I'm coming alive. Amen. Amen. Okay, so how do we move up? How do we move up? So evaluate yourself quickly. Where on that graph are you? Where are you at? There's a whole bunch of you that should be higher. That's what I'm saying. A whole bunch of you that should be further up. Okay, just, just know that. But what would be your next step or two to maturity? What would be your next step or two up? I would say to you, the reason you have grown, if you're not at zero anymore and you've moved up, there's probably two reasons why you have grown or moved into maturity or becoming more like Jesus. Number one, you are willing to give something up for Jesus. You're something you're willing to sacrifice something for him. Number two, you're willing to invest in somebody else because that's how you grow. You give up something for Jesus it gives you something better back and then you invest it in somebody else and then you grow and then you do the same and then you do the same and then you do the same. That's how you grow. And it's all by the grace of God. You can't do it in your own ability, but you can ask, Lord Jesus, help me. Let the power of your Holy Spirit help us to grow. So let's continue. Acts 8 verse 9, looking at how the early church functioned. I said, but there was a certain man, verse 9, called Simon, who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. Verse 11, and they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. So here's a guy that's probably involved in the occult. He is applying demonic power to impress people, to do signs and miracles that are 
embracing people. And they were like, man, this guy is the power of God. So there's real power in this world. You need to understand that. There's real power. But now the amazing thing is in verse 11, or verse 12. It says, but when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. So Philip came and he preached about this other world, this other realm, the kingdom of God. And then he preached about Jesus, the name above every other name. And suddenly this guy who had power realized, sure, there's another power here. There's next level power here. Maybe he had a little rocket. And now he, had, now he sees Elon's rocket. He's seeing real power. He's really seeing real fire. He's seeing the heavy, heavy duty, <laughs> you know, falcon rocket. And he's saying, man, this is next level. And then it says they were baptized. In verse 13, then Simon himself also believed. Hey, you know there's real power when an occultist <laughs> turns to Jesus. Now, the thing is, in our world, there's a lot of Christianity that's a bunch of rockets standing on a, a launching pad and it's going nowhere. It's powerless. No firepower. Missing out on the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And I mean, who wants that? Yeah, then you know, if, if, if the power is with the occult, fine, go there. <laughs> but I have good news. The real power of God is found in the Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ and in His name. And in Him, there's freedom. In Him, there's salvation. In Him, there is life and life in abundance. So it says that he, Simon himself believed, when he was baptized, he continued with Philip, and he was amazed seeing the miracles and the signs which were done. You see, real Christianity is, everybody's like, no ways. <laughs> That's just amazing. That's where we should be at. You know, so I was um, been spending time with some people this week and it was just epic just to share with them about the Holy Spirit and then praying for them and to see another world came, come down upon them. They would share how they would experience fire in their stomachs. You could see in the tears running down their faces and, the, and they would share how they felt like from their feet all the way up to overflow, they felt like this incredible presence and power of God flowing through them. Man, and I was also standing there with a, like in a river. You can feel heaven come down and you can see all the, you can see their excitement. You can see they like, this is epic. I mean, the guy turned to the girl and he said to her, this is better than drugs. <laughs> Obviously, they've never done drugs, but I'm, you know, <laughs> But, but spending time with them, it just awakened me again. I, I'm like, wow, do we have any idea what we carry? Do we have any idea how much we have received in God? And then we're so like, meh, whatever, going through the motions. No, we should be on fire. We should be on fire. And I want to share you the story I mean, some of you would have heard this before, but I'll share this just to give us a bit of context in terms of the spirit realm and the power that we carry in Jesus, because we're not always aware. So a few years ago, there was a lady that would come to church and she'd sit there at the back on the balcony. And every time she would come to church, there would be weird things happening in church. Speakers would give issues. I would feel horrible. I'm like, this is terrible. And then we found out that when she comes to church, she would stand there at the front door and she'd ask the ushers. She'd kick out her sandals and then she'd say to the ushers, may I come in? And they're like, yeah, sure. You see, that's how the enemy works. He needs permission to come into our lives. So she has an occult background and she came to mess things up here. So she would kick out her shoes and then she'd ask permission to come in. In the same way, we give the enemy permission in our lives by agreeing with him, by sinning, by disobeying God. And we like say, devil, come in. And then some of our guys, as she was walking up the stairs, they heard her cussing. As she's starting to walk up the stairs, she starts to cuss. And so we heard all about this. And then a few months later, I was like, it was a Sunday morning and I felt terrible. I felt like a toxic atmosphere on me, like, 
I'm like, like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. <laughs> and as I was here in the, in the worship, the Holy Spirit said to me, she's here. And I looked up at Vrachtag. She's here. <laughs> so, I, so I was like, I'm over this. I was, this is my atmosphere. I'm going to steward my atmosphere. This is our atmosphere. So at the end of the service, I went up to her and very nicely just asked her, so why do you do this? Why do you kick out your shoes and you ask permission? She said, because I cannot enter this church if I don't ask permission. There's a wall of fire around this church, a wall of fire. So she's seeing into the spirit realm. There's a wall of fire. This is, this is God's territory because we worship here. We pray here. We declare Jesus is Lord here. And she couldn't enter if she doesn't ask permission. And then I asked her, so why do you cuss when you walk up the stairs? Because she said, well, otherwise I can't stay here. Because it's just the presence here, it just freaks her out. So what she does, she cusses because when she cusses and curses, then she builds a little bubble around her where she can stay, a little dark atmosphere so that she can stay here. So I very nicely just told her, you know, if you want to give your life to Jesus, we'll help you. We'll walk a road with you. But this stuff, not welcome here. <laughs> you can't bring your stuff here. You can turn to Jesus, yes. And it was amazing because just to, for me, just to step in my authority and say, hey, no. And that from that moment, those things just, just broke off. We have authority in the name of Jesus, but there's a real spirit realm. And do you realize every time you cuss, <laughs> Every time you swear, every time you speak an ungodly word, you're opening the door to the enemy into your life. The spirit of this world. So next time you hit your finger with a hammer, think before you speak. Otherwise, you're going to get a visitor from the dark side. Okay, so be aware. So in the kingdom of God, we have real firepower. We're not afraid. Because we have the true power of God. So imagine Jesus coming to you and saying to you, hey, do you want to follow me? And you say, yeah, 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 I want to follow you. Awesome. Then he's going to say, well, pick up your cross and follow. In other words, if you want to follow Jesus, you need to sacrifice something. That's what it's saying. That is the reason you've grown in the past, and that's possibly the reason why you're not growing currently, because you're not willing to sacrifice. You become comfortable. You like like life is good, and man, just yeah, I'm not connecting with God, but hey, whatever, yeah, life is good, comfortable, comfortable. No, you need to give something up if you want to. It's not payment for something; it's making space for God to come into your life. You need to give something up. Pick up your cross. You see, the cross speaks of sacrifice. You can't have resurrection Sunday, resurrection without the cross. You have to go through the cross. And there's so many people in our society like, yo, I want the power of God. Yo, I want the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's the spirit of holiness. You can't have the Holy Spirit without holiness. And you can't be holy without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps you to be holy. And then as you become more holy, you receive more of the Holy Spirit. That's critical. As has often been said, you can't have fire without a sacrifice. Old Testament, they would offer these animals with Elijah. They had this, and the fire came down and it fell upon the sacrifice. You have to bring something to God if you want to take that next step up. It's the only way. It's the only way to move forward. The Word of God says, be holy for I am holy. So for every one of us, you know, they there is a next step up. What is God putting his finger on right now in your life? What is he pointing out right now? Because that's your next step up. So receiving the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 8, verse 14. This is now where the Samaritans actually receive the power of the Holy Spirit. They have heard about Jesus, they have been baptized in water, they've committed their lives to Christ, they've been baptized in water, but they had not yet received the Holy Spirit. Look at this, verse 14. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. Verse 15, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Do you see it? Salvation, water baptism is about I'm laying down my life, sacrificing something, and then 
receive the Holy Spirit through prayer. When they lay hands on them, they receive the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to pray for people to receive the Holy Spirit. There's so many parts of Christianity where they're just like, well, we believe in the Holy Spirit, but there's no manifestation. There's no reality of the Holy Spirit. You can't see the Holy Spirit actually touching somebody's life. So it says, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. And verse 16, for as yet he had fallen upon none of them. You see, that is that next step on your walk with God on that graph. You commit your life to Jesus. You be baptized. You, you sacrifice something. You make that commitment. God, I'm laying things down. And then you receive an infilling of the Holy Spirit that launches you into orbit with God. It says they'd only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 7, then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Someone that has the fullness of the Spirit needs to pray for somebody else who has not yet it. And they will receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, so there's that maturing process. Um, just show the graph again. Just want to, yeah, so you, you start, you're starting off, and if as you want to launch up, you, there's something you need to get. You need to bring fuel for the fire. You need to bring something to the Lord so that He can launch you further into maturity and into Christ. Then the last bit of verses, verse 18 to 23, and when Simon saw, he saw, he could see Physically, something is happening in people's lives. It's not just like, well, I think you received the Spirit. It's like, I know you received the Holy Spirit. I know, I can see it. I can see God touching you. I can see the tears. I can see the power of God rocking your life. I can see it. And Simon was like, man, this is epic. So when he said, and when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered their money. He could see, man, these guys have next level power saying, give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to me, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You see, the Holy Spirit is a gift. It's not like come to maturity and then you receive the Holy Spirit. One day when you are a saint, now you're already a saint by faith in Jesus. You receive the Holy Spirit simply by faith because of all that Jesus has done for you. It's a gift. Come on, say it's a gift. You can't work for the Holy Spirit, who is God. You can't work for it, but you need to bring some fuel to the fire. So then verse 21, he says, You have neither part nor portion. This matter for your heart is not right in the sight of God. In other words, hey, you need to make some space in your heart. Your heart is full of a lot, lot of rubbish. So you need to bring a sacrifice. He says, Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. So Peter was saying to Simon, you can't receive the Holy Spirit. I, I, I know you want the power, but this is not how you get it. Not through paying for it, but you're bound by darkness. You are bound by the spirit of this world. There's so much darkness on the inside of you. Unforgiveness and lying and whatever else is a little rubbish. And if you want the power of the spirit, you need to repent. You say, God, forgive me and wash me clean. And the good news is we are all on different levels in a sense in terms of our growth in God, different levels of maturity. My next steps and your next steps are two different things. You just start where you're at. You take your next step. It's good enough for Jesus. He's, he's got a plan for you. you just, just take your next step. Whatever's your next step, just take that step and God will pour out his spirit upon your life. Okay, so how do you launch your life with God? Three things. First, what's holding you down? What's keeping your rocket stuck there on the platform? What are the things that's messing up your life? What are the things that are binding you and keeping you back? Maybe wrong ways of thinking or maybe some uh, sinful stuff or addictions or whatever else. Then secondly, bring some fuel to the fire. Say, Lord, I want to I, I bring this to you, to you. Help me to break free. And then thirdly, you need to receive and release the fire of God. You need to receive it. Ask someone to pray for you that like we're going to do now. Pray for you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then pray for somebody else. You need to give if you want to grow. Okay, so those two things are critical. So just put the graph on there again. As I said, we are all on different places in our walk with God. So for me, what my next steps are not your next steps. So Monday evening, both Sunday and Monday, I was feeling disconnected from God. I was like, something's not right. And so we had a prayer meeting here Monday evening, and I was 
not connecting with God. And I knew God was speaking to me. So he put his finger on an area of my life. He was saying, give that to me. And so I was like, yeah, I want, I want, I want to be launched with God. I want the fullness of God in my life. And the thing that the Lord was putting his finger on was certain movies in my life. It's not sinful. It's not even a high age restriction. It's just stuff that clutters my mind and my heart. So I was sitting here uh, in, the, in the prayer meeting and I can immediately say, okay, Lord, you, it's yours. Next five to six months, I'm fasting these things. I sent a message to my accountability partner, friend, pastor in Cape Town. I said, man, this is my commitment. And I just spoke to my wife and said, hey, that's my, that's my commitment. I am laying those things down. <laughs> the moment I did that, I started to feel the presence and the power of God in my life. Next day, I was praying for young adults at my house, and they were experiencing the fire of God. I was like, this is epic. Epic. Heaven came down because I was willing to bring some fuel to the fire. It's not a massive thing. Small thing. And whatever you sacrifice, what you get back is a hundredfold better. For me, it was movie. What is your thing? What is your next step? What is your next step? What is the thing that the Lord is putting his finger on? So the one thing I want to highlight is this. I've been speaking to multiple people where it comes out that Christian men are drinking alcohol too much. So having a glass of wine, not a sin. Having a beer, not a sin. But if you do a beer and a beer and a beer and then shooters... <laughs> then we're going in the wrong direction. And so I'm chatting to people and the results of those things are just horrific. We're talking about divorce. We're talking about adultery. We're talking about destructive behavior that is, is, is messing up people's lives. So I want to highlight that. The word of God says, do not be drunk with wine, but be full of the spirit. Be full of the spirit, not spirits. Okay. That's a quotable quote. Because <laughs> again, if you, want the full, if you want to be launched with God, you need to bring something to the table. Or maybe you're at that starting point, and the way I was when I started with Jesus, you know, I could hardly say a sentence without cussing. Then over time, I cleaned up my mouth. I started to speak life and not death. As I said earlier, if you cuss, you're opening another atmosphere over your life. Do you really want to do that? So maybe you've cleaned up your mouth in that sense, but maybe there's still some other things. Maybe there's some gossip that you are succumbing to. you chatting about people behind their backs. And you say, well, it's too late. You pray for them. <laughs> maybe not. Eh? So maybe cleaning up that area of your life. Stop talking about other people. Just pray for them. Just love them. Honor others, not breaking them down cleaning up your mouth. What, what are the next things that Jesus is putting his, his hand, his finger on? As I said, I'm maybe way down the path compared to some of us. But there's a next step you need to take. And when you take that next step, when you bring fuel to the fire, I promise you, you're going to experience more of God. Fire falls upon a sacrifice. What are you supposed to bring to God in this season? Receive and, uh, you know, a little bit of compromise, a little bit here, a little bit there, and you find yourself in trouble. As I said earlier, there's so many people who've lost their way this last year. How about us upping our game? How about us launching our lives with God? How about saying, okay, Lord, you're putting your hand on this and this. I'm giving it to you, and I'm going to speak to my accountability partner. I'm going to talk about it because you need to put a commitment in the light, and then you go for it. And you say, man, now I'm going to receive the fire, and I'm going to release the fire over somebody else. Amen. So I want to answer this question to end off with this. How do you, why do you need the Holy Spirit? I want to illustrate with this. I often share this when I go to uh, places like Brazil. So I sometimes I share this example with them. Okay, so imagine quickly with me, hopefully all of you are soccer lovers. Imagine with me in the near future, a miracle happens and Bafana Bafana qualify for the World Cup. <laughs> That's miracle number one. And then some extra major, major miracles. 
is that Bafana Bafana is in the final of the World Cup. Can you believe it? And then also Egypt, because Egypt works well with the Bible. Go read the Old Testament. So Egypt versus Bafana Bafana. It's the World Cup final. It's massive. Billions of people watching it. This is huge. And we all have our flags out. And even the whiteies are face paint. They're like, yeah. And we're doing it. And so we're all watching it. And they are as the final. And man, Egypt starts off and they score early. And we're all like, oh, Bafana Bafana. Come on, man. And it continues the whole process, and they're fighting, and they're trying, and right at the end, just before the final whistle, we score one all. Praise God. Extra time, still the same. And then penalty, shoot out. We're all chowing our nails like crazy. And then it becomes this really, really, really weird movie where you suddenly appear on that center line and you're the fifth person that needs to come and kick that fifth ball into the net. Okay, just stay with me. It was a weird movie. Okay, so you are there on that center court and you're like, uh, uh, what the heck? I hope we get it before I need to kick. You know, so you're like really praying like crazy. Anyway, so the Egyptians start off and they, they score. And we're like, uh, and so we come, Bafana, Bafana, right corner. Yes. And it becomes two all, three all, four all. And you're like, no, this is a crisis, crisis. And so the Egyptian guy comes and he kicks and he misses and we're like, yes. And you're like, okay, I need to do this. So you're like moseying up to the, the front of your, the, the, the net. And you're like, you're like freaking out. I mean, your mama's watching, man. This is like freaky. You're like, everybody's watching, billions of people. It all comes down to you. The whole nation's hopes are, are on you. And you're like, oh. So you pray. Because that's the time to pray. And so you pray and say, Lord, I don't normally pray, but today I need your help. And so the next moment, the spirit of Pele comes upon you. He's a legend soccer guy for those who don't know. The spirit of Pele comes upon you. And like, oh, oh. You're like, you I mean, he's a goal scorer machine. He has courage. He's got the skill. There's no fear. He's like intimidating the hell out of the goalie. And he's like, oh, we're doing this. And you're standing back. And you're like, yeah. And you come and you kick and you score. La like, Duma. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. <sighs> Man, what a beautiful moment that would be. Scored. And you probably think, what the heck does this have to do with anything? <laughs> do you know how many Christians there are who feel like, I'm not good enough. I don't qualify. I can't do this. I can't pray for somebody else. I can't trust God for a miracle. I don't have what it takes. And then you're standing there and you're like freaking out. Jesus, help me. And then the spirit of Christ comes upon you. And all his ability, all his grace, all the power of the living God, his heart, his passion, his knowledge, it flows through your veins. And the kingdom of God comes. That is why you need the Holy Spirit. That's why you need, you need the spirit of Jesus Christ. When the Holy Spirit fills you, it's the spirit of Christ that comes upon you and it rocks your world. I mean, as I was with this people uh, in this week praying for them, I tell you, you feel like a Superman, although you know it's not you. You're clueless. I can't do anything. But you're standing there and you're facilitating the atmosphere of heaven and suddenly they feel the fire of God in their stomachs and they feel the presence of God filling them from toe to head and they say, this is unbelievable. I never knew. I never knew that another world can come to our world and transform us. Spirit of Christ. Miracles begin to break out. Lives begin to be transformed because it is not you. It is Christ through you. Amen. 
It is Christ through you. I want to stir your faith. Stop the lies. I can't. Yeah, you can't. Neither can I. But Jesus can. Amen? He can through you when you bring a little bit of a sacrifice for the fire. And he's going to fill you up with his Holy Spirit fire. And he's going to rock your world. I tell you, when I was praying with you, I was spending like three hours with each couple, Tuesday, Wednesday, and with others as well. And I tell you, it's just like, this is life. Somebody's life's being changed. Kingdom of God has come right now. Amen. Come on, let's say this is for me. Come on, say the Spirit of Christ is for me. Amen. So Jesus is the one that baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. And when he fills you with fire, he sets you free from all your other stuff as well. So what's holding you down? What fuel are you going to bring for the fire? What's the one thing you can give up? Maybe your time. Man, I'm going to get up a little bit early and spend it with Jesus. Man, I'm going to lay down maybe that series that's absolutely consuming your heart and mind. Or maybe I'm going to just uh, alcohol. Every time I start with one, but it goes to five. And shooters. Stop. Stop. Stop with the one. And if the one is your problem, stop the one. Do whatever it takes. Do you really want to destroy your life and the lives of people around you and disconnect from God because of, come on. If you need alcohol to have fun, something's wrong. Amen. That's why I love when as believers we get together, we don't need to have alcohol and we're having a blast. I mean, we look drunk. We're having so much fun. (laughs) And there's no negative consequences. It's beautiful. Let's up our game. Let's up our game. So what are the one or two things you're going to bring to the Lord? And then receive the fire and then release the fire to others. Hallelujah.